How did the script for Don't Blink find you, or did you find it? I would say I found it. Um, I worked at raising money for financing for a bunch of years, and I really knew, I had no idea what I was doing. And eventually, I was introduced through my producing partner, Carl, Carl Lucas, introduced me to a gentleman, Nathan uh, Lobrieski, last name very difficult to say, um, and they agreed to give me money. And they said, Zach, you can write it, direct it, produce it, star in it. I said, no, I don't want to do that, because it was the first thing I was doing as, as a producer, and uh, I didn't know how to do everything at one time. I, I said to them, look, I'd like to produce or direct, and on this one I want to produce, um, and I have somebody I think would be a good director for it, and then also my scripts at this budget level are, are more comedy, and I don't think they travel as well, because uh, people laugh in different countries, and the, the cultural value of comedy doesn't really transition well in other languages, so uh, comedies do okay in the country, but not necessarily outside, but everybody goes boo the same way. Um, and then starring in it, I'm like, I would like to get bigger names than me in order to help guarantee distribution. And so those were my thoughts. Um, then a friend of mine, Travis Oates, who was, I was working at Acme Comedy Theater. I was part of the Acme A team. So every Saturday night you do basically like Saturday Night Live type of thing, uh, sketch comedy. And he was the owner of Acme at the time. And he was a script writer who had sold a bunch of different scripts to large studios. And so he had a, a stable of really good scripts and he had this concept for one. Uh, and so when I told him the budget level, uh, he wrote the script in like three days. Yeah, he's that guy. He's like, gets it done super fast. And so he did it and he directed it. So yeah, I brought him on board and then I brought Brian Austin Green on board and um, Brian was the contact to Mina Savari because they had worked together on the movie Domino. And Brian and I had worked together on uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. And, which is a funny story because uh, I play a hero from the future. And so if you're coming from the future to the present, in the Terminator world, you're naked. Um, so that's a great way to meet the entire cast and crew. Uh, dude, I'm a white guy, I'm a ginger. So this is, you know, needs a tan, you know what I'm saying? And um, so the first thing is like I, in my macho pose, future ball of cosmic energy and my chest explodes because I've been shot in the future and then it as a pow erg, and I go away and I'm walking around and everybody like hi this is a uh, nice to meet you it's kind of embarrassing to be honest and I'm sitting down and Brian Austin Green walks over and he's a big dude like I don't know if you know that but like he's like six two ish and he's like he looks like he plays football he's a big cat and uh I'm sitting down on set in my bathroom feeling uncomfortable and he's eyeballing me. He's like, I don't know you. Like, I don't, I don't know. You saw me naked over there. And it might be what he's like, no, where, where do I know you from? Where am I? It's like, uh, yeah, this Titus, that, that he's like, no, I saw Titus. That's good, but it's not it. It's not it. Resident Evil Apocalypse, almost famous. Like, no, no, no. It's like Christmas story. He's like, oh my God. I love Christmas Story. My son loves Christmas Story. We watch it every year. And he pulls a fanboy. It was hilarious. I'm like, okay, creepy. I'm not wearing any clothes. So we start budding it up. And then I reached out to Brian and I told him about the script. He read it. He loved it. Um, he came on board, which was huge. And Brian uh, is very talented. Like watching him and t like, you know, I didn't know his work really before since 90210. I hadn't really paid attention to him and I didn't really care for 90210 because I wasn't a little girl, a uh, teenage girl. Um, so when I saw him on Terminator, I was blown away by how good he was. Like, holy crap, he's just really profoundly depthful. And uh, so when he came on board with us, I was very happy. And then he brought Amina, and that's how we got everything kind of running. I think I answered the question. You did. I I did. What was the time frame from when Travis, right? He wrote the script three mm -hmm. days. Then when did you actually go to the location and start shooting? We got the script. We got the money in like August of 2000. Yeah, we got it in like August. And then we got everything set up. 
written, locked down, location scouting, casting October, and then started shooting January, January 2nd. January 2nd, wow. So yeah. you know, it's still still with champagne bang, bang, residue bang, bang, in your hair or whatever. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> and I, I went, we were shooting in Rio Dosa, New Mexico, but Carl uh, is from Roswell, New Mexico, and there's a film, class film, uh, you know, the film department. Right. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry, tired. Uh, film department in there, and there's also like military barracks nearby. So I'm staying in like military barracks on a cot, you know, and uh, my my girlfriend at the time was like, well, what are you changing this thing for Christmas? I'm like, sweetie, I, I've got a movie. Santa Claus came. This is all good. I don't need anything else. This is all I want to do. I want to go through contracts. I want to learn the DGA. This is awesome. That's all I wanted. There was nothing else that anybody could give me besides that. That was just ecstatic. So uh, yeah, we shot for 22 days. Yeah, six day weeks, which is always, everybody who's a filmmaker out there will know six day weeks suck. And the first day back after the one day weekend, nobody's friendly. Nobody's friendly. 